I'm here along one of the Jalan Laksa Manas in Malacca, the street where the Laksa is. And today we are visiting a local Peranakan institution, Nancy's Kitchen, in search of the best Laksa. Remember how I said a whole spiel about the greatness of Peranakan cooking? I couldn't think of a better way to exemplify what I said than to visit one of the most popular Peranakan restaurants in all of Malacca, Nancy's Kitchen. Chef Nancy had the same canon event as anyone growing up in a Peranakan household. They were put to work early in the kitchen, helping out wherever they can in the many ultra effortful recipes in Peranakan cuisine. This often meant pounding away at the pasta and mortar, and then getting reprimanded that they are not doing it correctly. Not many people know this, but when Nonias turn 7, they have to cook up a uh, ayam boa kalawa for New Year's Day dinner. The dish has to then earn the approval of at least 3 family members, in order for them to earn their kabaya. If the dish is not up to standard, they are cast out of the family, never to speak of their Peranakan roots again. That is why you will never find a Nonia that can't cook. True story. So the time now is 10.45am and I made a reservation for 11am just as their doors open because Nancy's Kitchen is known to be immensely popular. So hopefully we get a nice seat and more importantly, a good bowl of laksa today. Let's get it guys. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy the content, the best way to support me is what you are doing right now. Giving me the video watch time. All of the reviews in this series are strictly unsponsored. If I don't pay for it, I won't talk about it. Which means that I have to make money in other ways. Please consider joining as a member of the channel if you can afford to do so. Or subscribe if you haven't already. Your support is much appreciated. And now back to the video. Hello, one. Okay, I greatly overestimated the crowd. I believe. I'm the first one and the only one. Hello. Uh, can I get one pie tea? One ayam buah kola. And one nonya laksa. What color you have in the What color is the picture? Give me two pieces. Yeah, two pieces. Yeah. Peranakans, originators of the nonya laksa, which Singapore laksa is adapted from because the godfather of Singapore laksa married a nonia woman a nonia woman a nonia what now what is authentic somebody help okay we start with the appetizers kueh pai tea oh they are using the top hat one not the the typical pai tea shell i don't know what's the difference <laughs> but it's so cute i'm not sure if it fits it Wow, the skill is showing it. So well balanced. Just the right amount of chili and really every ingredient. The shell, just the right thickness, just the right crispiness. But, <laughs> well, the top hat design is very cute, right? It's a bit restrictive. Cause like you look at this, right? You 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 want to one bite it. It's just like begging to be one bited. But you cannot actually... <laughs> Not for me at least. Maybe for those of you who unhinge your jaw more frequently, you'll be able to get it. So I'm missing. Off to a great start. Next, the dish that earns you your kabaya, ayam bawakaloa. Wow, the thickness of the gravy. Holy. I'm almost forgetting that I'm here for laksa. It's already a good curry chicken, but the impact that Bua Kaloa can bring, right, is oh, it's like salty, sour, a little bit pungent, kind of like truffle, but not really meaty, umami. I need to describe it in fragments because there's nothing that quite tastes like it. Anyway, we have to go on to our main course, the laksa. Looks very promising already. The bihun catching the lasa, the thickness of the broth. Let's not waste any more time. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> what a broth. You want the spicier, saltier, stronger? This checks all the boxes. <laughs> it's actually borderline challenging spicy for me already. Especially at such an hour. The broth is carried by the noodles so well. We can see how it latches on, almost like pasta. But it coats the noodles maybe a bit too well. Let me give you a challenge. If I were to give you a spoon right now and ask you to give me a spoonful full of broth, are you able to do it? If you can, you are a better eater than me. Because I'm like maybe a few spoonful of noodles in now. And this is what my bowl looks like. The noodle has clung onto the broth so hard such that I can't get broth. I, I honestly can't sip broth, which is like to me a huge part to eating laksa. I want to be able to like but here I can't. Not only that, I, I'm wrong again. <laughs> so why am I always wrong? You mean to tell me that Malacca Laksa doesn't have Laksa leaves? I've been under the impression of that is what differentiate Laksa from curry noodles. A lot of you have commented on like, you know, maybe I like curry noodles more, which might be true. But the way I see right, Laksa is a kind of curry noodle. The two distinctions I've been able to find so far is one, the noodles, which is like, <laughs> kind of debunked by now because laksa needs to have laksa noodles and laksa noodles is too fun, but it doesn't seem like it matters anymore and two is laksa leaves I thought that is such a prolific flavor of laksa but I'm wrong again huh? as this bowl of laksa stands it is indistinguishable from curry noodles in fact a bit too alike curry noodles because the turmeric is very strong there's this curry powder flavor to it and another means is that the toppings are very boring Fish cake, fish ball, two very small pieces of taupok, and prawns. Unpeeled prawns again. Am I being too princessy? Do I have a point? And I cook at home eh. I'm okay with like peeling one, two cages of prawns. But if I were to eat a laksa dish with chopsticks and spoon, I don't have any work area to work on the prawn. Nor is the chopstick and spoon good at peeling prawns, unlike fork and spoon. So that means I have to use my hand on the curry dish and then come back to eat the noodles. I just like, ah, uh, is this valid? Like if I were to, if I were eating with you, right? <laughs> valid or no? Why would you pull me through that? And the last thing I want to mention is that the broth tastes very vegetarian somehow. It tastes like the kind of curry you get at vegetarian noodle stores. I'm detecting very very little of uh, shrimp. There is, there is, but it's being pressed very hard by the spices. Okay, let's finish up, digest, and I'll see you guys soon. We are now at Hay Cafe. And I got myself an ice black coffee. Anyway, recap. This all feels like a sick. Be careful what you wish for episode. Like Eldrick, you wanted saltier, spicier, more intense, right? And what? Still want it to be lama? Sure. Have it. But now, you can only sip on a teaspoon of broth every time. No spoonful of broth for you. Also, no more hums and laksa leaves too. Shrimpiness of the broth? Also way down. It tastes more like long tong now. I have to google it. It's there, it says Nonya Laksa, one bunch of polygomon leaves or Don Kasum, which is Laksa leaves, what we call Laksa leaves. Not to be confused with curry leaves, which is, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Don Curry. So, <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? Who's right? Who's wrong? I actually borderline don't care anymore. I just want a good bowl of laksa. I don't care already. If being right means that I don't have taupok, cockles, or laksa leaves, I don't want to be right anymore. I, I want to be happy. You all can flame me all you want in the comment section. I don't care anymore. <laughs> One plate I'll walk for the laksa, two plates I'll take a bus for the laksa, and three plates I'll go anywhere in Malacca for the laksa. And Nancy's kitchen is. Zero plates. I have no doubt about the skill at Nancy's kitchen. Their ayam boa koloa was perfect. Their kue pai tea as well. But their idea of laksa is too far from mine. Again, I have to emphasize that this rating is based on what I would do for the laksa. 
I'm not an authority on laksa by any means. But if I think of laksa, I don't think of what they are serving. This is the last laksa I had planned for the Malacca arc. <sighs> so unsatisfying to end the arc like that. But I have less than 24 hours left in the city, since Kelante was closed for the first 3 days. Do I just call it and hope that I'll get a better bow back in Singapore? No. I didn't come all this way to eat mediocre laksa, in a place where people are so good at cooking. We are going to find a good bowl no matter what. Forget the video, forget the intro, the backstory. I don't care about any of that anymore. I just want to eat something good now. We are emptying the recommendation bag and going to every single one of them. First on the list is a place called Auntie Nan's Laksa 1961. What? Hello, Laksa is Hello, Laksa First on the list is a place called Wild Coriander. Their version had a really impressive prawn stock, maybe a little bit too impressive. You can still see the hues of orange around the bowl, similar to that of a prawn stock. So much that it pushes the coconut flavor to the background. You can still taste it, but it's tough. If you pay less attention, it really starts tasting like prawn noodle soup, or hey me. I got the yellow noodles this time, and surprisingly it didn't have any key taste. We didn't have cockles, but we have not only laksa leaves, but mint leaves as well. Quite a curveball, but I don't hate it. Two plates. Next, on the day that we are leaving Malacca, we are going back to Auntie Nan's Laksa 1961. Their version had a way more familiar and predictable flavor profile. It reminds me of the laksa I had when I was a kid. There was also a really strong umami component to the dish that was causing my tongue to tingle and salivate. Can't say I enjoyed that. However, what I did enjoy were the fresh cockles. Having it again after the absence really made me appreciate it that much more. Overall, one plate. Three hours left of departure, we are hitting up Yong Lai Xiang. This had the best balance between prawn and coconut flavors. I felt so validated. From early in the series, I have been craving for a flavor to sit with the coconut, but not overpower it. I thought wild coriander was my answer, but they showed me that you can actually do too much. Yong Lai Xiang's balance was the closest to my ideal. Is it a three plates? No. There was this annoying sweet cloying umami that just diminished my appetite. It sort of tasted like there's a canned sauce added to it. The rest of the toppings were uncannily similar to Auntie Nance's. Except of course, I went for Grey Tail. I had to leave no stone unturned, right? But I didn't like it. Too mushy and it doesn't really catch anything. Still, I caught a glimpse of my ideal bowl of laksa. Two plates. And with that, we are concluding the Malacca arc. No, we still haven't found a three plates, but we did learn a lot. 1. Having prawn flavor in laksa is more than possible as we have seen at Wild Coriander and Yong Lai Xiang. 2. Rice noodles are the superior noodles because it's the least invasive. We tried yellow noodles and yi mian, and they were both only distracting against the flavor of the broth. And 3. From the laksas that I have tried, I don't think it's very defined what authentic laksa is, even in the origin place. As such, I'm giving up on the endeavor for authenticity. From here on out, when we return to Singapore, I'll be searching for the laksa that best fits my idea of the dish, which has become a much clearer picture after this arc. But for now, that's all I have for you guys this time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!